Look at Doug over there, scared him, and he yelled, boom, I did yell. Doug scared every. I scared Adam this time, sitting over there, didn't even have headphones on. Anyway, the reason why I do that, by the way, is because it's exciting, and because I picture half of you blowing out your ears with your headphones when you're waiting for the episode, and that brings me joy. You know what else brings me joy? Giving away free workout programs. I know we do it all the time. I still get excited. Today's giveaway is Math Strong. So one of you lucky viewers will get free access to Map Strong so long as you do the following. Leave a comment the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, subscribe to this channel, and turn on your notifications. By the way, we do this to get better uh, on the algorithms on YouTube. We want to rank higher than everybody else because we want to be the best podcast in the world. Actually, we are the best podcast in the world. People on YouTube just don't know it yet. We're almost there, so help us out. Also, we're running a sale on two very effective strength building programs, Map Strong and Maps Powerlift, okay? They're both half off. Go check them out at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code August Special with no space for the discount. All right, here comes the show. Justin. Yo. They did a study on exercise and alcohol. You want to guess what they... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm listening. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's good for muscle growth and improves the pump. No, oh, I God. knew Could it. Could you imagine? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. Could you imagine that? All I need is an excuse. No. I mean, before I get to the study, actually, because this is a cool study, uh, have you guys ever worked out slightly yeah. buzzed with you have? Yeah. 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 It's not, it's not good. No. 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 I, I actually injured a part of my body doing that that i didn't know you could injure i when i used to have i used to like be part investor in this this gym down in palm springs area and we had it was like a, a like we would cater to you know people who liked racquetball and rock climbing it was like a really nice place right and we yeah. had a wine bar in there and we would shut the gym down on fridays i think at 11 and me and the staff would hey let's have some wine right we, and I got drunk, and I decided I'm going to take my shirt off and work out because that's what I do when I get drunk. <laughs> you don't have to be drunk to do that. I know. Yeah, exactly. I, know. It's just a I like how you tied it to that, though. Day. I swear to God, bro. This is, my, this, this is me in my 20s, okay? Me in my 20s, you right. know? You're hanging out with some of your staff. You're like, oh, yeah. yeah. Then we'll go get a pump. A oh, it's hot in here. Yeah, you anyway. Has that changed? Girls? Yeah, I was yeah. just going <laughs> to say, Doug. Thank you, Doug. Uh, I, was, I was like, is loud. anybody else going to say never, something? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. What do I Work out my shirt off. I wear my beater. Well, your wife beaters say well, different. I progress. I mean, it may as well. It's painted Either on way. you. It covers my nipple. <laughs> but yeah. no, I went. I went. Uh, I went out to the gym and I worked out and I pulled a lat. You ever pull a lat? Ooh, That's yeah. got to be one of the hardest muscles to pull Ooh. ever. Yeah. Anyway, here's what the study showed: that uh, that al exercise reduced people's alcohol cravings. So people who had issues with that. alcohol when they exercise regularly. Which is kind of ironic because you would think that because it depletes the glycogen levels and the alcohol is one of the fastest, it's one of the fastest converting sugars into the body. Yeah, but I don't think people you are would, drinking alcohol for its energy. No, like, I, I don't think they are either, but yeah. that that's kind of ironic that yeah, that yeah. would happen, that that would actually suppress that because yeah. you would think that depleting the glycogen levels would make you kind of crave, you know, fast sugars. Well, here's, so think of it this way, because mm -hmm. I, I read the study and I thought a lot about it. And, you know, if you think about the reason why people crave alcohol in the first place, it's usually to make them themselves feel better yeah. right so it's like a it's like a it, de-stressor it's like a dope part. yes it's like a dopamine serotonin thing right you drink you feel good exercise produces some of those feelings too mm -hmm. especially over time so you know and you know what the studies show on on, on drug abuse right if people uh, aren't as stressed and can deal with their lives better they're less likely to become addicted mm -hmm. to substances so it's like okay now i'm working out regularly it replaces I, that feeling exactly yeah. so they have a less desire to uh, self-medicate with something like alcohol, which I thought was... I would love to see studies on exercise and... Was it general like that, or did they give you a percentage or a statistic? You know, I should find... I, I could pull the study up to see what it was, but it was a, it was significant enough to where, you know, they like I said, they did this... I mean, I noticed it with a lot of my clients. Of, uh, somehow I attracted a lot of people that likes to drink a lot, so... Weird. Uh, yeah, weird, <laughs> strange. Um, and, you know, that was one of the first things in terms of throughout the day like having to cope with stress or you know work or this or that like they started to reduce the amount that they're intaking and you know inevitably like some of them like completely eliminated it so yeah it it really does kind of replace that 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 feeling uh that sort of euphoric feeling yeah so well, they you did this on college students these were college students who had problematic drinking behaviors and they did 
a few controls. So they did one where they did nothing. Then they did one where they had them do therapy and art. And then another one where they did exercise. And another one where they did exercise and therapy and art. And the exercise, and of course the exercise and therapy and art, were the most effective at reducing the, the how, cravings. Now, how did therapy and art by themselves do? Did it come? Did it rival it they at helped all? A, no, but they did help a little bit. right? Any kind of stress reduction therapy. Right, that's why I was yeah. curious to see how close it was. You know, there, I mean, it's kind of it's multi-pronged, right, for the exercise. It's totally. Not, there's, you got to think of this, too. Like This is one of the reasons why I used to promote going to the gym every day. You know, Not necessarily training hard and heavy every day, but just going to the gym every day because what I started to notice with myself and clients was – just because you went to the gym makes you make better decisions in yeah. the rest of the day. One hundred percent. It's so, self embetterment. Like it, it's psychologically, it, you know, you, you you get value from that just by like actively trying to to improve yourself. Right, and because I don't think anybody considers alcohol a healthy choice that they make. Sure. Even if you enjoy no. it and you have it's fun. It's an escape. And, yeah. So you know that that's not a good choice. That's probably one of the first areas people are like, okay, I need to cut back my drinking when they get back into fitness. And so just by training or exercising or going to the gym every day helps you make those better choices. This is also why, oh, by the way, I got all kinds of DMs around. Remember, I don't remember what the name of the episode was where we did and we were giving out tips. And one of the tips that I gave that was like a game changer for me was making it a priority to lift on Sunday. Mm. And lifting on Sunday set the tone. I must have got 50 DMs of people saying like, oh my God, I did that last weekend and it set the tone for my week and made a huge difference. I'm going to continue doing that. I swear to God, I, I, I'd say 80% of the success with fitness is psychological. Totally. At least. Like the workout programming, it's important. You know, what you do, very important. But man, that psychological piece, if you could figure that out for yourself... <laughs> Like for me, it's like working out in the right. morning. I, I know if I work out first thing in the morning, I'm going to be consistent. If I don't, I'm less like, so it's a psychological thing, even though work, morning workouts you know, at 5.30 a.m. suck or whatever. Totally. No, it's totally true. Speaking of which, my, my son, my youngest, right, my nine-month-old or nine-and-a-half-month-old is the lightest sleeper in the history of the world. <laughs> I, I swear that to God. Sucks. A <laughs> leaf could fall outside of his room and he, the kid. So I'm like trying to work, work out in the morning. And so, you know, Jessica and I are talking about it. I'm like, well, okay, let's give this a shot and see what happens. Because I have, when I have the older kids with me, they, I have to take them to school. So the only time I can work out is if I go lift at, you know, 5.45 in the morning. The garage is right underneath the baby's room. Uh. But he's got a sound machine. You know, I, I'm like, I'm not even using the barbells, so I don't have to rack them. I'm like using dumbbells, putting them down. That's quietly. funny because that's how my house now is set up too. His bedroom is right upstairs, and not only that, I don't know if you have this. You're, are you connected to your Nanit camera? Uh, not not on my phone, but I can. So see I can he, I I can tell like when I drop a weight, the camera goes off. Oh, it alerts me. So you can. He so see. I know, and he has a sound machine also. So I have. But to does be he wake up? No, I'm lucky. He sleeps pretty hard. So, but uh, I've been concerned about that because I've been down in the gym working out, uh, and he's mm -hmm. right. I'm right under. You open the garage door, and it can yeah. it could wake. Oh him yeah, up. that's. I'm, I mean, I don't park in the garage for it because otherwise I'll open it and you'll wake yeah, up. Yeah. But I'm like, oh come on, kid, stay asleep. So damn frustrating. And again, and, well, speaking of of which, uh, some fun stuff with the kid. First of all, the kid eats like a machine, which is cool. I guess it's a struggle for some people, right? Is feeding their kids. He loves food. He loves savory food and his favorite dish. So Jessica will take some kind of like, she'll either take squash or carrots, something like that, right? Some kind of like uh, vegetable that's got maybe some starches in it. And she'll cook that, blend it. And then she takes the, the tri-tip from ButcherBox, right? The grass-fed tri-tip. Mm -hmm. And she adds it in there. And I mean, this kid's eating some meat. Like this food that we give him. Is very high in me. It's his favorite thing to eat in the world, and I have to like distract him to stop feeding him. So, so like I'll feed him and then give him something like move away and hope he doesn't scream because is he wants more. Basically, like pudding, like because you got to like puree the the meat like down to like <laughs> almost like pudding. Well, right? he's it's got like baby he's, food. He's yeah. got his teeth now, right? He's got four teeth. Uh, okay, got the, two, the two top ones are coming to the two bottom ah. ones. It's hilarious too because we have these uh, Serenity Kids makes these grain free like puffs, and he'll he put it in his mouth that, and then you'll see him go. <laughs> like, a, like a little beaver. Max, if we let him have the thing, he'll eat the whole thing. We have to we have to ration that yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? You know they have that. They're cool. I mean, you guys probably know this for sure. Uh, I didn't know about these until I had Max because they didn't have these when my little brother and sister were kids. It is it was such a smart invention, and there are these, and they're for like those little puffin type of yeah. things, right? So we take those Serenity Kids puffins and we put them in this little 
the jar that he can carry around, and it has a, a thing where he can stick his hand in. Oh, but it won't but fall it out. But yeah, it won't out, fall yeah. out. So when he, so as so, you know, because they just grab a whole bunch and then they all and fall. They drop it. Yeah, they drop it's... back in, and then he can only do a couple. I've seen it. It's got brilliant. The yeah, yeah. You yeah. can throw it on the ground Maybe and flip it. And I'm like, yeah. man, they have come up with some. It's like the tippy cup for food, right? Yeah. So totally. Like so, it doesn't spill out. Well, so what I was gonna say too is that you know because sometimes we'll buy because we get a certain order from Butcher Box, and now Jessica's giving the baby all the grass fed dry tip sometimes we'll run out and have to order some from the store yeah and because i'm you know we're giving it to the baby i'm way more aware of like the difference between yeah. grass fed and the other one the regular one has got like this thick layer it's delicious obviously but a thick layer of fat on it yeah. the grass fed not at all Way leaner. Oh, yeah. It's, and it's tri-tip. Tri-tip's yeah, got no, fat it's on a it. lot. It's a yeah. lot leaner. You know what? I, I keep tripping. So I just, I had their bacon yesterday again, and their the pork is insane. Yeah. The more we, yeah, the more I think about really it, good. like I actually enjoy their pork more than I like regular pork. So the other way around with tri-tip and meat, because obviously if it's more marbly and fatty and stuff like yeah. that, it has a, it has a better. No, more, heritage pork is delicious. Yes. In comparison. Way better. I had some of the, I had some of the other regular bacon in my, in my refrigerator last week. And then the, this uh, yesterday, Katrina made breakfast, and I'm eating it, and I'm like, man, why is this bacon so good? She's like, it's because it's butcher box. She goes, last week we didn't have it, and I used I used something from the grocery store, and I'm like, damn, well, I didn't was a big difference. Yeah, when you when you have them back to back like that, you can really yeah. tell a major. What's difference. that one dish called where it's got the the green uh, salsa and it's pork, uh, something verde? Oh yeah, yeah, something verde. chili verde. Oh, there you go. Chili Verde. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, Courtney made that with the Heritage Pork. Oh, it was yeah. really oh, that good. That sounds yeah, good. Yeah, that was, that was actually really surprising. Yeah, we did good. Taco Tuesday yesterday, and uh, it's funny. My daughter <laughs> hey, on Sunday. Hey, hey. <laughs> Taco Tuesday yeah, on Sunday. Taco Tuesday on Sunday. <laughs> you know, my, do my daughter does. Well, she's better about it now, but we'll, you know, we'll have the ground beef, we'll have the cheese, we'll have the, you know, the guac and the yeah, yeah. pico de gallo. My, and she's better at this now, but my daughter would get, take the taco, the shell, and literally be cheese. And then there's like four bits of ground beef just to make me happy. But now she's adding more ground beef because I would be like, no, honey, that's not a yeah. taco. What the hell are you eating? You've been that's hanging just, out with me too long. That's just a bunch yeah. of cheese, you know? Yeah. Did you guys hear about the one-year-old in Russia? Did you guys read this story? No. This is crazy. So a one-year-old in Russia somehow crawled away and got lost in the forest for three days. And they found this kid and baby was survived what? in the forest with wolves three and bears and shit days how, how does a pair how do parents lose a one-year-old like, that's for a three days that's a good question like how first of all how far can a one-year-old really get yeah listen are they even walking at this point are they crawling no it's this oh okay so it's uh, this this girl was playing in her family's uh unfenced garden mm. in the smolensk smolensky region of russia and wandered off while her mother was speaking to a neighbor for three oh days in the forest. And this forest has wolves and bears and shit. What? And they, they found the baby three days later, two and a half miles from her home. What? Two and a half miles from her home. Dude, Fine. That baby was on the move. Doesn't this sound like the like a origin story of a superhero? Oh, it's, yeah. Yeah. Like she was out there and she like- It was, sounds like a terrible mother. I know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Don't say that. You imagine oh, how bad dude. the mom feels. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure she feels awful, but how does a one-year-old get away for three days? Like, I mean, and how distracted do you have to be like for it to get that far away that they're not in- any like distance this that you find like, within the first twenty four hours. I don't the, know. The next like, UFC days? champion right here. Yeah. I, I feel like we're gonna find out when this kid's older. It's like she's a super. Like she's kind of superpowers. Oh yeah, right. wolves taught me some stuff when I was in the uh, forest one time. It's a it's a little girl. Yeah, yeah. So I just watched. There's this really cool documentary on uh, Netflix. Um, uh, Christy, what's what's the name, Doug? I have it on there. Uh, she was a, one of the very first female boxers. Have oh, you seen I talked it? about it. Christy Martin. Christy Martin. Yeah. yeah. Did I just tell you guys about this? What happened? No, you didn't. Oh, I didn't bring that up to uh -uh. you guys? No. Yeah. No, it was amazing. Do you remember watching her? So I do just by, you know, watching that, it kind of brought it back. But I didn't even think about her because, I, you know, Ronda Rousey and like this whole movement. Yeah, she's way before all that. Way before. She so you're going to tell us what is, the deal was? He, no, listen. He, okay. Sorry, I know I'm totally he's, hijacked. Yeah, he hijacked story. me. I got a boner for no reason. <laughs> I thought I told you guys. About, I thought I told one. Oh, maybe I didn't. I guess I didn't tell you guys uh, no. about this because Katrina and I last week, we were surfing on Netflix and it popped up and I saw her name and I, and I, I had forgotten all about her. And I start telling Katrina about her. 
that what you watched, okay, that's a new thing on Netflix. It's called uh, Untold Stories. They only have two yeah. episodes out so far. Both of them are fire. Yeah, it was really good, dude. Uh, and it got into her relationship with her husband and who uh, was also her trainer uh, and how she, like, previous to that was, like, a lesbian and then, you know, like, kind of went away from that for a while and, like, and then came back to it later. Anyway, there's this whole, like, crazy story surrounding, like, her husband and her and, like, how, like, ab like this abuse and, like, how he basically tried to kill her Whoa. at the end of this whole thing. Uh, but, dude, when she was boxing and fighting, she looked like... Like the Mike Tyson of female. That's what they used to oh, call really? her. She, she she was like insanely explosive, dude. It it was really cool to watch her fight. Mike Tyson asked for her to be on his undercard because the he the first time he saw her fight, he was blown away by her. And this was during the time when there was no female fighters. They were all very hesitant. To so even, was this like the nineties or early two thousand? Nineties, nineties. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So this was uh this she was she literally broke. Fighting women's fighting. I mean, yeah. she was the one. Don who, King who, promoted you know, her and everything. Yes. Yeah. So and, she's big time. And she was a badass, bro. Dude, she, like she, she was I bad. enjoyed watching her. There was some cards where I watched her on Tyson's card, and she put up a better fight. She won fight of the night because mm -hmm. she and what she got famous for the fight that Justin is talking about. Her very first fight with Ty, the on the Tyson card. Her nose got broken in like the yeah. second round, and she went the distance and won. Yeah. And the, like her whole fight, like blood's running no, down her nobody's nose. Nobody's seen that kind of violence. And she, you know, she's nasty. Yeah. Oh, she's nasty. So why I was gonna bring it up is that you know we're always talking about the streaming wars. Yeah. And like, and one of the the things that I knock on Netflix a lot of times, is like, ah, oh, they just not as good a quality, and they pump a lot out, and they I don't think they they they're as good as HBO and ESPN with telling like really good stories. Well, this is their kind of sport version. They've come out with two now. The other one is the the Malice in the Palace. If you've oh, never yeah. seen that, there was a there was a fan, and I watched both these situations. I, I watched. I haven't Christine. watched that one yet. I oh, you have to watch to. that because I watched that. That and they game, did a good job. They did a good job. Excellent job. Even if you're not a sports fan, the story is incredible to watch because they do the documentary does such a good job. Speaking of of, uh, of women fighters, did you guys see that video? Uh, it was an NFL game, I think, in in Pittsburgh. And this woman is like yelling at this dude, and then she goes like she goes to like grab him, and he's like, "Don't touch me," and then she smacks him. And what do you think happened next? Uh, punch in the face. Yeah, no, yeah. the guy goes to hit her, and the husband tries to jump in. The dude knocks out the husband, pushes her down. And I'm watching this, and I'm like, first of all, obviously, you're a piece of shit if you hit back. You, you know, you you hit somebody, it's obviously a lot weaker than you or whatever. But also, you are a stupid lady. Why? Yeah, like, that's... You, I, I t this is what I tell my daughter. I teach her this. I tell my son this, too, by the way. This is the lesson I teach it, both of them. If you hit somebody, you expect expect to be hit back. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care if they're older. I don't care if they're a man and you're a woman. I don't care what the hell. Yeah. If you hit somebody... You have you only do it if you're okay and you yeah. expect to be now hit back. You're opening up the field of violence. So. That's it. Yeah, yeah, upon yourself. It's a dumb thing, and it's funny. It's uh, I don't remember who was talking about this, but and I've experienced this by the way. Some uh, some women take this for granted that a lot of men are not going to return fire, which is the right thing to do. I think I that would be good for anybody who's a lot smaller than me, right? That would be the right thing to do. It'd be like, all right, whatever, I'm, I'm going to walk away. Yeah. But that la that the belief that there's no threat of violence leads a lot of people to doing stupid shit. I know, yeah. I know girls, you know, I, I, shit, I remember being in the car with girls and they would yell at people and throw shit at people in their car. Be why? Because... You know it's going to be me and not you. Like right. I wouldn't do that unless I knew. Right. Unless I, I, if I wanted to engage physically, like dumb, yeah, dumb thing to do. Consequences lady. for your actions. Stupid. But obviously, yeah. Like you yeah. said, I mean, he's like, going to probably you, be, go to jail, and he yeah. should. But come on, lady, what are you doing? Speaking of stupid shit and Netflix series, I believe Doug. I think you recommended this to me months or maybe even a year ago, and I never got around to watching it. Did you ever watch Dear John? I think it's called Dear Dear John. It's about the, it's a it's a true crime it's a true crime story on a guy who so it's based on a true story and they they reenact it. I'm pretty sure you were the one that told me about it. It's on Netflix. It's called Dear John. It's a true crime story, and it's this guy who who was scamming like women. Like he'd find rich women, and he was pretending to be a doctor, and he wasn't a doctor, and he the whole thing is it's a crazy series. It's I think an eight part series. 
And again, it's it's a reenactment, so it's not all every, you know everything's based off the true story. But it's a crazy ass story. Oh. You didn't tell me about no, this. No, it wasn't me. Pull no. up Netflix. I think it's Dear John. It might be. You might have said that he was watching a show on the John. <laughs> no, <laughs> no <wait. laughs> I was almost certain that you told me about it, and I hadn't watched it. And then we finally got around. It was the second season came out, so it got repopulated as a recommendation to me. And Katrina and I watched it, and we actually binged it because it was so good. Dude, who's who's the number one? Speaking of scam artists, who's the number one like champion, world champion scam artist of all of history? Uh, Madoff. No, but that's oh. yeah, he's up there. Okay, Rasputin. Oh, Rasputin. Oh, <laughs> man. you ever hear about Rasputin? No, tell me. Oh, bro, yeah, they're, they're, there's the, all kinds of like crazy legends around that. The, guy. the Russian like monarchy. Like I guess the wife. There was this guy who pretended. He said he was a mystic. Yeah, didn't and he? She, didn't he pre, like say he's gonna come back from the dead? Yeah. And, yes. And he. They, she brought him into the family, and he started to like influence how they ran the country and do a bunch of weird shit because he was like this mystic and he would sleep with women and do all kinds of stuff and he fooled everybody and other people were like this guy is a total scam artist and eventually they killed him. But here's the crazy part. The in order to kill the guy, we should look up Rasputin and how he got killed. You need to watch this story, then. You guys, are, I don't want to spoil it and tell you like what happens, but it's cr oh, I'll check crazy it what happens. I love and hearing don't, and don't because uh, you can Google like the real story and how it all unfolds. So don't spoil it for yourself. Just know that it's got a twist to it, and it's a oh, crazy I'll watch it because I get fascinated by this because you always think to yourself, how the hell do people fall yes for half this, this shit? With this guy, and not only hmm. that, this guy without I mean, this, you find this out pretty early. His uh. What is it? Oh, is that him right there? Yeah. Three gunshot wounds is what he died of. Yeah, he got shot three times in the head after he got poisoned, I think. He got poisoned and stabbed, <laughs> and then they shot him three times in the head. Look at his face. Yeah. <laughs> he, he looks, looks scary, dude. Yeah, he oh, looks yeah, crazy bro. as fuck. Yeah. yeah. Probably he's the, the world's like most notorious. Uh, yeah, and this is 1916. Was he tied to Aleister Crowley or no? That was later on. I didn't know later anything on. about him. You never heard of, well, you heard Rasputin, Remember Rasputin music? I was just going to ask yeah, you, is that connected to that? Of course. That's yeah, what they named they, it after. Now yeah. is it named after him, or is he? Ha did he own it? At no, one? no, no. It oh, so just name. So why would you name? Okay, there's a guy who's a notorious <laughs> freaking scam artist, and then you name your business he's, after he's it. Notorious, you know. It's like a, it's like that, a, that's not weird to anybody else. You know why? It's because it there's so many legends around him. Like maybe he was a mystic, and he could tell the few because especially the way he died. Like they had to like kill the fuck out of him. Like yeah, they did. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> Doug, find another source. I mean, I think they poisoned him. Stabbed him, yeah, and then shot him, and then he finally died. It was, oh my god, like, yes, hung him, set him on fire. Did yeah. you look up the name I was talking about, Doug? Did you find it? Was it the, Dear the Dear John? It, it is Dear John. Yeah. Okay. And you I've never seen this. Oh wow. You'll, Has, uh, you'll Channing love it. Tatum is the guy who's the actor. Yeah. Oh, I'm out. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah according to this, <laughs> pull it up so I can see it. You get okay. weird feelings when you see for him. season yeah, one. It's too much, you know. It's too much yeah. for me. Go on. It says coming September first. Is it Dear John or is it Dirty John? Dirty John. There you go. Thank uh, you. And it wasn't you who told me that one. No. Yeah, Dirty John. Sorry. Again, I, I thought think, I didn't. Feel, I, think I thought was, Dear John was off. I think I think Doug told you about the Dirty John. That you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I didn't think I was gonna like it, and it boy, it, I haven't been uh, ra sucked into a, a show to binge like I binged in two. Just two like Catch Me If You Can. It's no. It's more like. Um, did you watch that? What was that stalker one that that uh, that oh, that was really good? You, you, you. Yeah, it's more like that. Uh, yeah, but re but a real was that on a, based a on a true story? One. No, this is based on this is all true. So uh, the way it unfolds dirty. is. Oh, there it is. Look at that fucker, dirty mother. I'll tell you, you have another like a dirty, dirty motherfucker out there who uh, got caught uh, being part of um, the fires, the Dixie fires. What? So there's an arsonist that is a professor from Santa Clara and also like Sonoma, I guess. Was they caught him? Uh, a couple other areas that like just after the Dixie fire, like they caught his car, vehicle, everything. They traced it back to him uh, setting a blaze, these different areas. Like what a psychopath. What now? What was, did they say a motive? No. And he's a professor. And he's a professor of like sociology and he's like, oh. he teaches all this stuff. What are the what, social media? What do you get for arson? And, Is arson? A, big deal. It I, depends how much damage. And if deaths, he's be murdered. like literally. Can they? Can they? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah! If yeah. you set a fire that kills people, they they, yeah. could, they could charge you for murder. They should. Yeah. yeah. 
So God, that's a scare. I never thought about that. Like some because yeah, there's probably some uh, some of these fires have probably been started by dumbass kids that are being yeah. think they're being funny and shit yep. like that, and they light a fire like that. Yeah, Imagine not, not that. this guy. He's done multiple areas, so there's no excuse. So for that. I have a. Uh, I'm, now this is just me making shit up. Okay, just uh, there's your your quick uh, you know whatever um, disclaimer disclaimer. I this guy's a socio. He was a sociology professor. Yeah. What if it comes out? Because there's a lot of weirdos out there that, in their in the name of their cause, will do some terrible shit. What if he's like one of these super fanatic Gary Maynard? What if he's one of these fanatical climate change people, and yeah. he's setting fires in order to prom- like to get people to like pay attention? We need to oh like, my God. right? Could you imagine? I mean, who knows? Like, what's going on in that stupid brain of his? What a piece of garbage yeah because the fires they're bad right now dude yeah it's bad. Bad. my sister they're, was telling me up reno tahoe area is real bad yeah dude, it was bad when you were up there what, almost right a month now. ago now. sucked yeah it sucked we didn't even go outside yeah she it says was, she says it's even the quality is even worse right now yeah so. it was smoky as hell and then remember last was it last year yeah when last, they got year, real bad? last year was bad too. and it's i went like outside you got, yeah it, you got lightning you got all these other factors and then you, you know now we have to factor arsonist doing shit like this dude you know i'll tell you some other bullshit is i'm i Got the freaking the long COVID. Oh, I'm so annoyed by this right What's now. Your, so, what okay. does that uh, entail? Yeah. Well, hold on. Now you, you okay? Technically, when when was ten days after your first symptoms up? That was what last week Wednesday, right? Yeah. So last week Wednesday was ten days after first symptoms. Yeah. Okay. So as maybe of, maybe that was fourteen days. Oh no, you're right. That's that was 10, 10, 10 or twelve days. So you're not even. You're what? You're you're two weeks out now. About no, two weeks out, roughly. No, two weeks would have been Friday. Two and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and, and having some residual after getting sick, it's not that uncommon, especially only a couple well, weeks Well, it's out. weird because I felt, well, it's not weird. I get it. I get what I did to myself now. But it, I felt great, you know, last week. I mean, I, I tested negative on uh, Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday of last, mm. of the previous week. So I mean I by day ten I was already testing negative yeah. and already on my on the road to feeling better and then what I think and I talked about it on the show I talked about my first time smoking yeah. at, afterwards yeah. mm. and I'm I'm not again In hindsight not a great idea oh yeah you know <laughs> kind of ignorant right I mean <clears throat> looking back especially since I feel this way now but I did I thought I was I felt great I felt yeah. normal and, and even now I don't really feel sick I just it feels like someone's sitting on my chest. Mm. Mm. I just I, I I if you look up long COVID right now, all the symptoms, shortness of breath. Yeah, it's like and, lingering. It's basically lingering symptoms. Some people can have it for like months. I hope it's not that long because I can't even like walk the grocery store for thirty minutes without not having to get a two hour nap afterwards. Wow. That's where I am right now, and wow. I've it's tried to do a little. Fatigue. You're also getting close to forty though. I don't know. Maybe you're just, <laughs> <laughs> off. Maybe you're just old. Get out of here. Yo, I got. I'm doing. I mean, I'm doing the whole protocol. You got me on. You've got me on the. Glutathione, the vitamin C, the B zinc. complex, zinc, yeah. the, the baby, baby, uh, baby, baby aspirin. aspirin. I mean, you've got me on the full, the full yeah, deal one here. One of those so. is not approved. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> I, the, you know, glutathione is very interesting. They, they, they're showing some studies that low glutathione levels are associated with severe symptoms. Vitamin D's already been established. I'm thinking mm-hmm. I didn't mention that. Vitamin D, fish oil. Yeah, yeah. So I mean I feel like I'm taking everything right yeah, now. Yeah, but they say that the cuz I've been reading about this since you so you told me yesterday. Although it's only been two and a half weeks, I think you know, after about a month or so, then you kind of like, "Oh, you know, what's going on?" Yeah. But they they the theories are either a the that there are remnants of the virus left over in the body and so they're kind of still wreaking havoc. The other one is that it's autoimmune. So like your body now is kind of hyper sensitive and causing some issues yeah but I'll, I'll tell you what it's interesting too because my psoriasis is really bad right now which is weird because i'm so low calorie normally when i'm really really low calorie yeah. right now it suppresses my psoriasis but my psoriasis is really bad right now interesting yeah yeah so well, i don't uh, yeah i don't know something with inflammation but i like look that. i tell you what i know somebody it's what's so weird about this virus is that you have some people that are mild and then it's like i have a i know a guy young dude lost his sense of taste and smell mm-hmm never came back like it's been over a year he yeah. never has not come back yet well, that's it's been a really wide spectrum of uh yeah because like mine was like that for things. a while i but I've, i'm back like oh I'm, your taste is back yeah my taste is back See, that's a good sign yeah i i think you know he's funny uh, let me ask you this how many times have you been sick with other stuff and then you had like a cough that lasted like a oh few yeah weeks i after? mean that the the time that we thought 
we, you know, when you and I, when we all got tested for COVID way back when it was first going yeah. crazy, and I was, that sickness that I had was a million times worse. And then even after I got better, because it was I was like sick for like two weeks solid. And then after I got better, I had a cough for two more, two three more weeks. I mean, it was like a month. I was yeah. So feeling, it's not it's not that uncommon. Yeah. So I'm not. I'm, I mean, by no means do I. I mean, this is still for me. It, it's it's been more of an annoyance than it's been like yeah. scary or like really bad. Like it's just. I mean, I didn't even think there was anything wrong with me. Until I started to, to kind of exercise a little bit. I rode my bike with Max for a little bit. And every time I've done things like that, I have to like take a two hour nap afterwards. And that's not, I thought maybe the first time was like, oh, yeah. I'm just still a little tired or yeah, whatever. Yeah, but that's, that's consistently normal. happening now. And yesterday when I went to Target, you know, I ran a bunch of errands and I got back and I told you, I gotta lay down. Yeah, like, I feel like that after I go to Target too, though. <laughs> no matter what. I hate that place. Especially yeah. If you go with the wife. I feel like that when I sit though, outside uh, and wait. You know, but I, but talk I went, about I, all the supplements and stuff like that. Live on, uh, they they sent over, we got the, they got a ton. They sent a ton of vitamin C. I was just to gonna me. say, with glutathione, I wanna say this, it's terribly absorbed normally by the body. Yeah. So if you get glutathione, you want a some kind of a delivery method. So Live On's products have this liposomal. Uh, delivery method that was actually produced for or studied for pharmaceuticals to, to improve absorption and it really works. So you don't want to just use any glutathione. You want to use something that's got this or, or good delivery method. So live on that's that's what they spend all their money on. Yeah, in, they in research. They on. taste like they're the best. Yeah, they yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't taste good. <laughs> that's the way I say it. It doesn't taste good. It tastes like Built it's the best drugs in the market. Yeah, <laughs> only. But, but I tell you what, you know, a couple things pay attention to. This again, I'm not an expert in this. This is my own reading. Is probably for a month or two afterwards, you still have some. You might have some inflammatory blood clot issues. So that's why I'm personally doing. Even though I feel like I'm 100, percent I feel fine. Yeah, you're training and everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and so I'm are good. you, Doug. Right? You guys are yeah. both like I. There's I couldn't even do a full training session. Yeah, anymore. no, I feel totally fine now. But I, I am doing a baby aspirin uh, every night. Still, so I'm gonna do that for the next couple months. Just dwindling away. Yeah, I'm gonna do before and afters for you because I'm like dwindling yeah. away. Every no, day. you're fine. Yeah, you'll be all right. I'm gonna have to push all your guys' uh, <laughs> you know uh, chairs you. around. You know what else we had? So today was. Uh, first day of dropping Max off at the Montessori school. Now, how was he leaving him there? So I'm so glad I didn't go. So oh, I, I was going to say that would have been Katrina, so, so it was a massive band on the drive rip. here. Uh, and I knew what time she was going, right? So she was, she was going uh, right after I had left to come to work. And like, maybe I, I know it was at eight o'clock when she was getting there and at eight ten the phone rings and it's her. And I'm like, Oh fuck. Come on. Damn it. And I heard him this morning for some reason this morning, he was a little grouchy and not his usual self. And so I was like, oh, no, that didn't go well. And she she picked up. I'm like, hey, how are you doing? She's just like, oh, I'm not doing so good. I'm calling you to cry to you right oh. now. And she's like, I had to leave them. And she goes, and they just take them. She goes, it wasn't like a slow process. They're like, it's easier to just take yeah. them and then we'll we'll deal with them versus you trying to slowly say goodbye. It'll make it worse. That's what they yeah. say because so they literally like, just distract like, them as soon as possible. Oh, my God. They just took them. And then she says, I could hear them in the other room like crying. And just uh, she's like, oh, my God, it was so hard for me. It to leave. sucks. I know. That would rip my I, heart. It is, it is like burned into my memory when I first did that with my, my <laughs> oldest son. And it re reached their little hand for you. You're like, oh, oh, oh God. It's, yeah. dude, I can't even Brutal. talk about it. I literally, yeah. I remember I draw I, my, my, at the time, right? My ex wife was like, oh, you do this. I can't do this. I said, ah, no, whatever. No problem. I'll, I'll handle this. <laughs> and I remember I brought him and I'm like, in the whole, like leading up to it, you know, he's like, Papa, I'm going to be brave. I'm brave, you know, because I talked to him about being brave and this is a big deal. And, you know, this is great. And he's like, I'm going to be brave. And we got there and he was just squeezing my hand the whole time. I'm like, okay, this might be a little harder than I thought. <laughs> and then, you know, you're in there in the classroom. And then the teachers, what they do is they say, okay, parents, it's time to go. And then you got to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, he goes, can I give you a hug? I said, sure. And he <laughs> hugged me. And then the teacher's like trying to grab him and he wouldn't let go. And I had to peel my own son off my body and hand him over to a stranger <laughs> while he's crying. It'll rip yeah. my heart out. Are it? you kidding me, dude? Uh, <laughs> I went to work. I had a client was you know got there early and was waiting for me, and I went. I didn't even say hi to him. I walked all the way straight to the bathroom, and everyone's like, "What happened?" 
You know, and I come out and I'm like I drop my kid. Oh my yeah. god, terrible! Yeah, yeah. she told me about it. I'm like, hey, you you get extra points for mommy mommy points for handling that for us because I would have had a hard time. You know, it's that. funny though. It's like ten minutes later, fifteen minutes they're playing. Yeah. So they so it's cool is that she sent it like we were actually on the phone still talking about it. Oh, I hope he's gonna be okay. She's like, I'm just praying that because they so he is um, the youngest they will allow in school. Like you can't go to a, mm. a school any younger than where he's at. And they actually, and they make exceptions for him. Norm, the starting age is normally the earliest you can put a kid in pre-K or Montessori or any of those. It's three years old. Mm -hmm. And he's two. So the deal is if your kid cries constantly and he doesn't want to be there and he's underage, you got to come get it. Sure. You, you, he's just not but ready. But he seems okay. Yeah. So he, like she, they, she got a picture and a text message of him playing like 15 minutes later. So, oh yeah. So yeah. So he was eventually That's better. Good. Stuff like that. But. Dude, you guys want to hear something uh, really cool and a study about omega-3 fatty acids. This is a really good one. You know, there's a little, there's been a little controversy about like supplementing with omega-3s and fish oils and stuff like yes. that. Mm -hmm. So this study was uh, again, very interesting. The title of the study is, Higher level levels of omega-3 acids in the blood increases life expectancy by almost five years. What? So by almost five years, a one percent increase. God, how do they measure that? It's a, it, I mean, a huge. It's a long-term study group. I like, mean, am I the only one who gets like skeptical when I hear some shit like that? Like, <laughs> wait a second, dude. Like, how can we measure that they add five years of life? Like, how long you would have to track? Uh, well, well, you want to hear? Yeah, I do. Okay, so sorry. Okay, <laughs> sorry. No problem. So, two, a couple things. So, he's part part of the article. This is part of the Doug title. Threw me off because he was laughing. About I, you, that's why. <laughs> I don't trust TV. Yeah, How just, does that work? Always like there's yeah, no one the inside the box. Antagonist to science. There's not a real it. person yeah. there. That's fake. I don't believe. Yeah, that. I'm just kidding. So, hey, that would be, that's my great grandfather was like that. I sort of I don't trust. There's nobody inside the TV. I'm like what? <laughs> uh, so a one percent increase in the substance in the blood. So. Just 1% higher omega-3 fatty acids in your blood is associated with a change in mortality risk similar to that of quitting smoking. So that's how much of an impact they found. Hmm. So researchers, have, so here's what they did, right? The study used data from a long-term study group. So what they did is they monitored residents in this Massachusetts town since 1971. So they, so this is a long study, mm -hmm. and they and they found again in the study. That the increase that higher levels of this fatty acid in the blood had a dramatic decrease in all cause uh, mortality. Mm -hmm. So this is a very big deal. That's a big one. Yeah, yeah, no, it's interesting. Well, it also highlights because you've talked about the blue zones, and uh, one of the theories is like these like Mediterranean areas where they eat a lot of fish. Eat a lot mm -hmm. of fish that could have a have a, a, a possibility of being yeah. And this one is of the reasons why they this is live one of longer. the reasons why our recommendations here for mercury when they're like, oh, mercury and fish, everybody be uh, whatever. You I mean you go to Japan or Okinawa where they eat a lot of fish and they live longer. Uh, than we do, and their and their mercury levels are probably higher than ours are. Yeah. So I think it, there's some you know some. Well, so I there. think I think omega threes uh, for the most part makes sense for most people to be taking it for sure if you're not a fish eater. Yeah. So if you don't want, I mean, my goal and the way I kind of use them is like I keep them in the freezer now because you you're the one who got me doing that. And when I know that I haven't had fish multiple times in a week, I'm taking yeah. it. And the way I look at it is like, ah, oh, if I'm making sure that I'm getting good fish, like at least two or three times in the week, I feel pretty good that okay. It's and it, it may I may not hurt me to still take it, but I'm like I'm not big on having to take it every single mm -hmm. day. Uh, but if I know that I haven't had fish in a week, I absolutely. It's take one it. of the supplements that I've been taking consistently the longest is uh, fish oil or cod liver oil. The, you know what supplement I've been taking longer than any other supplement? Want to guess? Creatine, creatine. No, that's, yeah. yeah, that's the, the. I've been taking that probably consistently since I was fifteen. Now, do you ever go on breaks? Or you're I'd off really of it for a while. It. If I go on vacations or trips, and I wow. don't take it every single day. You take it that consistently? Oh yeah, yeah. I take it pretty. And I mean, shit. The studies are on creatine and health are exceptional, especially for mitochondrial health. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, that shit's going to get recommended. To everybody. No, you've been saying point. that it's, it's going to move its way into a, he yeah. a health product. Yeah, I think it should be. I think it will be. You know, for for at some point, probably in the next ten to twenty years. No, that's that's crazy. So you guys see that the news came out officially for the. We talked about it. I think I brought it up on the show almost a month ago now, uh, and now it's like official, official that uh, fans only or OnlyFans. Sorry, I always go only backwards. Fans, yeah. OnlyFans is uh, no starting stuff. October yeah. October first. 
They were banning all so, sexual content, which is like ninety percent of their content. Yeah, were they pressured into this? Somehow? So they're not pressured. Like, they're trying to they're trying to take on money. So they're trying to go public. Oh, so they and want investors. That, yes, and in order to get like big smut. money invested into this platform, they they have to go that direction, and so that's the move. Now I saw the Barstool Sports take on it. And he said something like he was speculating. Like he, first of all, he was talking about how we said it was just. I think this is crazy. Yeah. Where, where's the business model there? I want to like s visualize this. He brought up something that I thought was pretty interesting and a, probably a good theory. Like how could they possibly go all the way from that? If most of their money is from that. You got to you got to think that's too risky to lose all that. So he's like, what probably is going to happen is that you're no longer on your your feed or your profile. Can you have nudity? But what you do in your private DMs mm. is completely up to you, and we can't control that. Our visit, so that's true. Part of it's what, like an escort service. Oh, we're just, it's just a date, but we might decide to have right. Sex. So uh, mm. I, I'm assuming I, I haven't actually been on OnlyFans yet, but I'm assuming that because that's a private thing, that if I follow, say, this girl, she all of her her profile pictures and stuff can be all nudity because it's private like now that. They are. Now they are. But what they might move to in order to get the investor money is it, it'll be more like Instagram, but then in your DMs, you could still do so. You're, uh, so the, his theory is that he goes, and that's probably the, would be the smartest play here. Cause otherwise it, you just can't, I can't imagine. It is true though about taking on money, you know, uh, when you're dealing with pornography, it's like, you don't go public. Any risky stuff. I remember yeah. that was the hardest part about the weed business when I was in that was, uh, you couldn't, Put your money in the bank. Yeah. No banks would even take our money. I know. Even when you're legit and you were doing it, you had your license, everything like that. It's yeah, like it a massive the, stigma that's how what was so bullshit about it was just like, oh yeah, all these laws get passed, but then there's other laws yep. in like the banking world yep. that block all that stuff. So yep. then you're in the same goddamn predicament. Yep, it's like yep. you're still you're still somewhat having to run this illegal type of gray business because not all the laws to where you can legitimately do everything. So yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I, I did. I posted a meme of like, uh, it, like uh, it's yeah. had the news article and it said only fans bans pornography, and then underneath it, there's like a a bullseye with on someone's foot, like they're shooting their own foot. <laughs> yeah, dude. You know yeah I think I think his his theory from Barstool Sports is probably accurate. It's got to be that. Did you guys know one of the largest? Speaking of which, uh, one of the largest online, I think if not the largest quote unquote dating sites or whatever online is uh what's it called i have a friend that works there is Bumble? it no uh. it's like a friend friend finder or friendly something finder it's an old one it's been yeah. around forever yeah uh. it's, it's uh it's um adult friend finder adult friend finder yeah and people That's this people hook up it's one of the oldest dating sites and literally it's it's hooking up for sex. That's or the one swingers. that's like you know gets advertised. These like like ugly women in your area are ready. Want to yeah. bang? Yeah, yeah, it'll say something like that. <laughs> yeah, like oh yeah, smart marketing by the way. Yeah, kind of believable, it's like, achievable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. ugly people? Maybe <laughs> ugly people want to have sex. Let's go. But it's but it's huge. Yeah. I remember, I forgot the numbers that he told me, but it's by far the largest. It's extremely profitable. But it's private because you can never go public. You can never do anything with that. So I actually trained the VP of that business. Like oh, wow. Two decades ago, like forever Yeah, because it's been around for a while. Oh, yeah, a long, long time. She was the first person to tell me all about it. And I forget her exact story on like, uh, you know, uh, she was part of the origin story of it. And she was telling me all about it. And she goes, what's really popular, especially we know uh, like how popular is like swinging today. Like it's super popular, uh, right? And, and, and open relationships. I don't know, Doug, is it popular? So <laughs> as far as I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you have a lot we of these business, groups. a yeah. lot of businessmen and women use this and they, they travel into a city. You're, you're, you're from California. You're flying into Dallas for a convention for three or four days and you get on to adult friend finder and instantly we'll find everybody else in that vicinity that are is also looking for a hookup and it's that simple it's the world's largest adult dating site yep i had no idea but that's how she told yeah. me people the most popular way it's used is exactly what i just said you want to like tinder or is that like traveling quick, and, you know hookup like that was their whole model you want to guess right? how many members they have over 60 million 
Over wow. sixty million. That's crazy. People. I want to, and, and I think that there is a bunch think, of married people. I think the revenues are are some like ridiculous. I can't remember what it was, but it was a number that I was like, no way. So speaking of companies and revenues, so I uh, try to remember to share on here whenever I buy stock. So I bought. I just recently. I haven't bought anything in a while. I just bought uh, Weed Maps, which is goes under the ticker M A P S. So I really like it because it's a it's at it's near its uh, one year low. So it's a, it's only like twelve dollars. I want to say it was around twelve dollars or eleven dollars a share when I got it. So it's somewhere around there. And I know that Kevin Durant just partnered up with him. So you talk oh, really? about one of the number one players in the NBA, and he, I'm sure he's got people uh, far more intelligent than me that are looking out for him to help him with partnerships with potential massive companies. And Interesting. So, uh, the company was found on... Uh, this is actually for the adult friend finder. Oh. 300 million annually. Yeah. Revenues. Wow. There the acquisition go. price is said to be around a billion. <laughs> <laughs> That's where, in 2017, too. Pull up where yeah, we map is at right now, Doug. So, um, so yeah, no, I snagged some of that for both. Uh, I actually bought... That, that was one that I bought from my portfolio. Dude, and I read Max's. a tweet, speaking of which, uh, wow, they pulled in 439 million from 2015 to th through 2019. So in four years... Weed Maps brought in that much. It's expected 160 million in revenue this year, and they expect in 2021 that it'll hit 205. Well, that's a big jump from 160 to 205. Yeah, they're just—I mean, they're one of the leaders as far as like networks in the the weed platform. They were when I first when I first got into it. They were just starting, and mm -hmm. and they exploded. And so I just—you got that big of a network of people that opens up the door for advertising and many other. I, I, I read this tweet that was so sad and hilarious at the same time. It said. Uh, who would have? It goes. Uh, I'm at a family gathering right now, and we're all smoking weed and hanging out. And who would have, who would have thought that the illegal part of this was the gathering? Was like, yeah, yeah like, dude. it's weird, right? That's funny. That's the world we're in right yeah. now. The That's weed is crazy. fine. You know, cops show up. You know, it's like hide the. No, the weed's yeah. cool, man. No, we're no, just no. not supposed to hang out together. You guys That's need funny. to separate. That's funny. Hey, real quick. I hope you're enjoying this episode. Head over to masszymes.com forward slash. Mind Pump, okay, this company, Bioptimizers, makes the best digestive enzymes you'll find anywhere that will help you assimilate the protein that you're consuming for your muscles, help you break down carbohydrates for better absorption. So if some of you get bloated after eating carbohydrates, you can try digestive enzymes. Also, enzymes that help you break down fats. Some people have issues digesting fats. Now, these supplements have actually been a game changer for me. Some of you know that I deal with gut issues. I've included their enzymes in my meals, and I have way better digestion, way less inflammation, and I feel like I'm assimilating more nutrients. So head over to masszymes.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 10. So that's mind pump 10 for 10% off all of their products. All right, enjoy the rest of the show. First question is from Coolio Colin 2. What are some ways to stop binging every time you go over your calories a little bit? Oh, Shock yeah. Shock collar. <laughs> it totally works. It works very, very effective. effective. This, is a, this is a really how you go into your diet really affects this a lot because if your mentality is very much like I'm on this strict diet and then if I break this diet, I've cheated on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, What it does psychologically is it creates this phenomenon where – there's a line. Once you cross the line, well, I've already crossed the line. Yeah. Now I've already crossed all of it. Yeah. Once. Now that I've already crossed the line, it doesn't matter. So I might as well just go crazy. Also, it's the restrict mentality of when you're on your diet. And so what you're doing is you're constantly using willpower to restrict yourself. And the second you go off, the floodgates open. Now, why is this true? Well, think about the behaviors that you have when you binge versus when you just enjoy the same food, right? Like I could eat a cookie or two from a sleeve of Oreos and enjoy them. Binging is literally, I ate a whole sleeve of Oreo, or I ate so much I made myself nauseous. And as I'm eating one, I'm thinking about the next one. I'm not even enjoying what's in my mouth. Rather, the solution is to go into eating and understand all the value of food, mm -hmm. and I'm eating to take care of myself, which sometimes means... I eat a cookie or sometimes means I eat a slice of pizza. That's also taking care of myself just differently. It's not physically good for me, but I'm enjoying this with my friends and my family and it's not that big of a deal. This was a game changer for me because this used to be me. I would go 
to an event or something, and I'd find myself eating way more than I normally would yeah. because I felt so restricted before. And once I made the switch, it was really easy for me to have like you know one you know well, burger or something. You like that. see the difference when you're mentioning these processed foods. Like I mean, that's it. You you get hooked like once you open that that's a good door. Point. You know, and and so obviously you got to be mindful of what types of foods you know you're you're eating uh, one of the things too that's helped me a lot in terms of like not going over calories was just trying to seek out more satiating foods and so for me it was like you know it's more protein adding that in but like just having that uh that feeling of satiety where it's like I, i'm not i'm less likely to, to keep wanting to be snacky uh, afterwards and so to to introduce that first and then maybe adding you know the carbohydrates on top of that uh, you know, afterwards was helpful. So I've had a lot of success with this. This is something I struggled with too myself. And um, I've had a lot of success with both myself and then and then teaching clients this. Something that I found really common when this happens, you you tend to not want um, to be aware. You you decide, um, and it, so you're distracted. It like almost always happens in front of the television or on your phone, or maybe even at a party or a situation like that where you're not aware. And so until, instead of telling a client or even myself that like, I can't have this, or it's even saying I can't binge something, I don't put those restrictions on myself. The rule I make myself is that I have to eat at the, at the dinner table where there's no television nearby. I can't have my phone and just eat. Or if I'm going to go to a party, like I, I still have to, if I'm hungry, I need to eat at that dinner table before I go to the party. So I'm not going to the party hungry and then I have all these distractions. Maintain awareness, right? Yeah. So just making you, forcing you to become aware and not telling yourself you can or cannot do something. And you just say, listen, my one rule is I, I can eat all those foods if I really want them, but I'm going to sit at the dinner table and just with no phone, no TV. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how how much, because you're aware of what you're doing at the moment, you just don't keep shoveling in your mouth. Yeah. You you eat and then you're, you're full and you're satisfied and you're like, I'm cool. I'm, and I'm gonna go put it away and then I'm gonna go sit down. But it's being in front of the TV. That's where, I mean, if I'm in front of the TV, that's yeah. where stuff can just keep going down just because of mindless. Eating. Yeah. Or on my phone, watching YouTube videos or some bullshit and you'll, and you're eating processed foods like you guys are talking about and you just keep shoveling away. Yeah. And you, and, and you find that, and I'm sure you guys have experienced this. You didn't even eat to enjoy the damn food. No. You eat until you made yourself feel bad. Yeah. No, like, you're chewing and you're already yeah. getting ready to put the other yeah, one. There's no more room. Yeah. And then yeah. afterwards you're like, Oh, I don't feel good. And then you might even continue going. It's, it's a very interesting, Interesting uh, phenomena. The other part, and you kind of talked about this a little bit, Justin, is identify your trigger foods if you have any. Mm -hmm. I know what mine is. Yeah. Mine is potato, potato chips. chips. Yeah. So. If I have, especially Lay's potato chips, that is that is so <laughs> for me. It's so palatable yeah. that there's also this physical like they've mastered that engineering. Yeah. So I, what I do is I just don't have them. I just don't have them in the house. And if I do have them, I'll buy a single serving bag. I will almost never buy a family bag because the pull is so strong for me. So identify some of those trigger foods for yourself. Oh, I agree. But a, a lot of this is is the psychological like, and, and you'll see it in the question even. The question says literally, what are some ways to stop binging every time you go over your calories a little bit? This person in their mind, whoever asked this question, for them it's like I'm either at my calories now that I've gone over, I'm already screwed. Right? Yeah. It's all or nothing. Right. It right. doesn't work that way. You go over a little bit, you went over a little bit. Yeah, you got to have flexibility. Yeah, it's not you know black or white at all. It's very gray when it comes to nutrition. So if you go over a little bit, that's okay. You went over a little bit. It's not like, oh, I'm already screwed. I might as well just go crazy and, and eat everything. Next question is from Nay Nay Mud. Is five by five effective? Yeah, so yeah. five by five, so, so five effective. Five. Most all of our programs have some sort of five That's by five. All training. I was doing to establish with the football team, like just like throughout their programming previous to that, and just try to keep it as simple as possible. It's the best programming for just getting to the very totally. meat and core, uh, you know, of what to do in the gym. Yeah, for people who don't know, five by five is five sets of an exercise and five reps. And why is it so effective? Number one, there's more to this than just that. It's, it, they place a heavy emphasis on compound lifts. So if you look at five by five programming, it's usually squats, deadlifts, bench press, overhead press, rows. So that's part of the reason why it's so effective. The other reason is, because they make you do five sets of an exercise. Good practice. Yeah, you practice mm -hmm. them very often. You get a lot of central nervous system adaptation. These are technical exercises, practicing them 
you know, set after set makes you really good at them. And then, of course, because of what I said earlier, you picked these compound lifts. Like, if you get a little bit better at a barbell squat, the returns are so much greater than if you got a little bit better at, you know, a leg press or a leg extension or something like well, that. Well, yeah, if you're running a five by five, you're not doing 10 different exercises. No. You're doing a handful of exercises. You're more likely going to pick, or you should if it's a good five by five program, pick the big compound ones mm -hmm. and you're getting great practice. You know, you got two or three sets to get in the groove and then you got two or three sets where you're actually hitting it really well. And I think for anybody who's just starting in the gym or even if you're, you've been in the gym for a couple of years, you're still relatively new to training that those movements we talk about it on the show all the time how important they are to practice mm -hmm. and just and that adds up when the average person's only doing programs that are two to three sets in there and you're doing five you're doing damn near double the work yep. on the movements that are most important you're going to get and over the course of weeks months and a year of training this way you're going to get a hell of a lot more practice than the average person yeah and i like it too with the lower reps because then you can really you know eliminate some of the fatigue yes uh, you, you would normally get with high reps and then really perform them at their best uh, especially with these compound lifts, and then you're still getting the volume because you got five sets. So to your guys' point of, of being able to get that kind of practice, so you hone in on those skills while also performing them at a really high level. That's why I like 5 yeah, by 5 because some people, what they would do, right, instead of doing, if they, okay, let's say the options were 5 by 5 or their regular program. Usually what it would look like is two or three sets of one exercise, two or three sets of another exercise versus five sets of a compound lift. So you can think of two leg exercises, not including squats, that you did five sets total for versus five sets of squats. I don't know if I can think of any combination of two exercises that would give you more bang for your buck than just five sets of mm -hmm. squats. That's a big reason. Right. Now, when does this become not effective? When this is all you do yeah, all the you're time. you're doing it too long. Yeah, and what you'll notice, this is what I notice and with clients too, if you stick to this long enough, I'd start to get issues in my joints because oh, yeah. of the heavy weight, because I'm doing the such repetitive mo movements. Right. I would notice my hips or my shoulder or my knees. There's not enough other planes uh, accounted for as well, too. So we got to, you know, consider training in the frontal plane and the transverse plane, not yeah. just sagittal. So not just, you know, what's in front of you, what's behind you. Yeah. And also not doing higher reps. I mean, that too. yeah. I mean, you go from five by five, you doing that for six months. Switch to like 10 reps or 15 reps. Watch what happens uh, to your body. So anything could be uh, abused and will stop working. But overall, with all the popular programming that's out there that's well known, I'd say five by five is, is top. It's pretty solid. Oh, it's top top five or top three even for me. Next question is from Neal SM. What isolation exercises had the biggest impact on your physiques? I love this question because mm. I could think of an exercise for almost every muscle group. Really? Time. Yeah, absolutely. So shoulders, um, the cable reverse fly. Uh, I've demoed it on the YouTube channel. So uh, not like your standard standing up where, it, where you bend over and I actually pull the cable through. Um, that blew my rear delts up. That was a, a great uh, isolation exercise. Uh, my triceps, I remember when I introduced uh, dumbbell skull crushers, never had done those before, and that those blew uh, my triceps up. Um, chest, I know this is a compound, um, but going to incline and introducing that was uh, one of the biggest things I ever did for my chest. Sissy squats for my quads, like that was a huge game yeah. changer. Um, I don't know if I have something specific for my hamstrings that I remember as an isolation exercise because there's not there's not there's only so much of that. Can you consider? Um, would you consider a Romanian deadlift because it's a single joint exercise isolation, right? Because technically you're not. Yeah. I guess you could, uh, right? Yeah. Although it's hip, so that's kind of yeah, a big joint. I mean, it's lots of muscles involved, but yeah, I mean it's it's definitely targeting. Yeah. I noticed a huge impact from I can two exercises in particular that really did a big difference on me. Uh, dumbbell pullovers. Mm -hmm. I really saw a difference on my back from doing that exercise. And that's technically an isolation movement. And then laterals for my shoulders. Yeah, uh, I, I was going to say that. It really shoulders. rounded me out. You too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really rounded out my shoulders uh, to do those. So, yeah, and it, you know, uh, isolation exercise. I know we talk about compound lifts all the time, but, you know, they they also have value. They, they're good to add volume. They help you isolate, obviously, uh, certain muscles. And they're not all created equal. And, I, and uh, with isolation exercise, it's really important it's important. Technique's always important, 
But isolation exercises are exceptionally important that you feel the target muscle. Right. Otherwise, you kind of waste the whole reason why you do them in the first place. Like laterals, like what I'm talking about, right? I'm doing regular laterals, not even the rear ones. People in the gym often turn it into like this weird shrug row kind of movement. Waste of time. You yeah. get like you develop your upper back. You with almost it. see like a hip hinging kind of uh, yes. ex an extension there to to be able to get it up. But yeah, I was going to mention that in terms of like like providing that kind of definition and cap of the shoulder like that really helped to develop my shoulders further. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, again, you guys probably have a lot more experience with the isolation exercises, but uh, like for me, just anytime I do any kind of bicep exercise, it just, it, it blows them up. Like I just don't do it. So I mean, for me, it's like preacher curls. I'm like, Oh wow. Look at, look at what just happened there. Well, it's I just discovered crazy. this exercise. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the important, Sounds silly. I think point to know is that it's, uh, more often than not, it's, it's you introducing a, a new movement more than it is like, Oh, because mind pump said dumbbell skull crushers or lateral yeah. rolls or whatever that's like if you do laterals all the time and then you go try and think that's going to blow them up for you it may not do anything for you because you've been doing that for so long yeah. and doing something unique and different could be and then upright rows may blow your side delts mm -hmm. up more than anything ever has before because you never do that yeah. so right. but yeah I, I mean i think i think the formula is an ice a great ex isolation exercise is an exercise that you can feel that target muscle you could keep it uh, under tension for a good portion of the movement, and then you could load it. Mm -hmm. If you can load, if you can get, if you can control it and really feel it in that area, you can load it really well. That's kind of the recipe, I think, for and then it being novel. You know, that's kind of like the trifecta: novel, be able to feel it really well, load it good, yeah. and it's probably going to develop. One more, uh, and I remember specifically adding this because it was after I watched Pumping Iron at the age of 16. I think that was the first time I watched it, 15 or 16. Uh, the, uh, the concentration curl that I learned as a kid was the one where you sit on the bench and your arm is inside your elbow. Remember yeah, that yeah. version? Yeah. Then I watched Pumping Iron, and Arnold does this bent over – concentration curl version yeah and i tr tried it and it was until this day it's one exercise that'll give me a bicep pump like nothing else oh, and i don't know really? if it's because i'm hanging my arm low and the blood's flowing to it or whatever yeah but it's to, like for a pump it's like incredible i've oh, never gosh. liked that it's funny really it's, yeah i've never i mean i still did them and and they were in the routine but it wasn't it was nothing like a preacher i mean preacher curls spider curls actually did that for me like that was a big one and see it, they're similar to spider curls just in are. the angle but i think yeah. you have to like pull your elbow out and there's all kinds of technique with well it. i put a lot of focus on my chest and it's a very basic exercise but like when i'm doing a cable fly oh, yeah. i really like it when um you know i'm alternating it so i'm keeping one you know i isometrically contracted while the other's going exercise. full range of motion like it's so simple but i feel the shit out of that i love chest. that exercise that's a staple chest movement for me for sure just because we talk about the benefits of isometrics and there's just not a lot of exercises that you do for the chest where you maintain a, a squeeze yeah, yeah yeah where there's a good isometric portion of it so it's a great way to incorporate isometric training into your in your routine and it feels amazing to like finish a chest day off with an exercise right. like that next question is from pat of blanc i don't feel that shrugs do much for my traps can i swap them for farmer's walks on my workouts are there better alternatives so first off I like uh, that. yes but second let's talk about shrugs for a second it's not just pulling the shoulders up. If you pull the shoulders up and back, you'll feel it in the trap. So think about you're not going straight up, but you're going up, but back, a bit of a back angle, almost like you're trying to shrug behind your ears. Mm -hmm. Totally hits the traps differently, and you'll feel more of a squeeze. Now, that being said, there is some there are some phenomenal trap extra. Farmer walks are great. The one exercise that I've never felt anything hammer my traps like this following exercise ever is the wide grip snatch grip pulls. Yeah. Yeah. I'd never done them before until we did uh, Map Strong. And we, we created that with Robert Oberst, right? He's a strong man competitor. And he was like adamant. No, no, we got to put this exercise in the program. It really works for my shoulder girdle. It makes me really strong. So when I followed the program, and I went light, right? Because it's kind of an explosive movement. I have never felt my traps work like I did, like that exercise. And so if you really want to hit your traps... 
Yeah. Give that one a shot. It's I great. like, yeah, I definitely like farmer walks for that isometric contraction, but what really blew my traps up was hang cleans. Hang yeah. cleans to a press were yeah. unbelievable for my traps. It's just because it's, it's so explosive and, um, you know, getting those fast twitch muscle fibers like activated, like helped to really develop more size uh, up, up in my traps. So I, I definitely think that you look into that. I had to be. I had, think I was the only, at least in my gym, for sure. Where there, we, there was quite a few men's physique athletes in there. I think I for sure was the only men's physique athlete that was doing hang cleans to a press. Like, just it's not a common exercise you see, especially in the bodybuilding and sculpting mm -hmm. type of world. It's definitely a more athletic type of exercise. But boy, do I remember those blow. I think, and it's just when you think about it, because the point that Sal's making about how you shrug kind of. Up and back, up and yeah. back. And it's because of set. Yeah, yeah, because of the, the way the traps run, right? They're like this, you know, kind of diamond diamond shape in your upper back, and they're they're responsible not only for lifting your shoulders up, but also pulling, helping yep. pull the scapula back. So both the pulling of the scapula and the elevating of the shoulders is incorporated in in the trap, the traps movement, right? So doing a hang clean, you get that. You have to. You rip it up and back, mm -hmm. and then the press part. They also re are responsible for stabilizing the shoulder girdle. So if you are if you're ripping up a heavy weight, you get that, and it, and they're explosive. What else do you do explosively for traps? They just don't get a lot of a uh, explosive training and all the other traditional exercises. And you can get and because it's explosive, you can move pretty good weight, and then jerking it up or pressing it up over your head, and then the stabilizing portion. Yep. Oh, so you want to know what's interesting uh, is that the traps, the neck, and the shoulders are all typically higher in androgen receptor density versus other muscles. So and the androgen receptors are the receptors that testosterone attaches to. And incidentally, traps, shoulders, and neck, you'll see in men, tends to be much more developed versus any other muscle group versus women, right? It's, they're very, they tend to be dense in androgen receptors, which is why I think of all the muscles I can think of, the traps and the shoulders, they really respond well to explosive movements more than other muscles. I mean, you don't necessarily like build huge biceps with explosive, you know, hang cleans and stuff, even though biceps are involved, but you see the traps yeah. really blow up. Uh, here's another exercise for traps. Uh, Lee Haney, who won Mr. Olympia, I think eight times, he did this version of barbell shrugs where it was behind his back. So he put the barbell behind his back and he almost, it's like he had to do almost a bit of a row, right? To get it was clear, forearm past cool. his glutes. But it, I've try it out. Now, go real light because it's a weird exercise, but oh my God, does it hit the track? Because it, it forces you to bring your shoulders back and kind of do that movement uh, with the shrugs. And man, does it hammer uh, the traps. Look, if you like our information, if you love our podcast, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have so many free guides there to choose from that can help you build muscle, burn body fat, sculpt your body, improve your performance and mobility. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.